Toughest Electrical Code Coach. Let's get out here and fight the good fight. If you're new to the channel, this is the Electricians in Action. We get together every morning, five days a week at 9 a.m. to talk about the code before we go out and fight the good fight. All right, today we're going to learn about one of the most sugar sweet, you know, you know, little known secrets that's in the NEC as far as running conduit and circuits underground. Okay, I'm going to teach you about this. So uh, we're in our video series on 300.5. We're covering A through K. Should be able to get it all in this week. Okay, and then I'll try to make a compilation video that covers all the videos all in one. But today we're going to be looking at this. Let's go ahead and pull this up. All right, so we're, we're back at table 300.5. And today we're going to be looking at column four. It's over here on the far right hand side. We're dealing with column four. And let's go ahead and read the black bolt heading. Residential branch circuits rated 120 volts or less with GFCI protection and a maximum overcurrent protection of 20 amps. So let me put this, you know, just break this right down. We're dealing with a 120 volt circuit on a residence only, okay? We are dealing with a GFCI protected circuit and it cannot be more than 20 amps. So it could be 15, it could be a 15 or 20 amp circuit that is GFCI protected and it's going to allow us to not have to dig it so deep. And this is a very little known secret that I want you guys to know about. Now, every area is different, but I'm going to tell you what the NEC says today. And if, unless you're inspector, they have written rules that, you know, make it above the NEC. It's hard to, it's hard to argue with the NEC. So let's go ahead and look at this here. Remember when we looked on the left-hand side of this table and it said all the locations? Well, on the left-hand side, it lists the list of locations and then across the top, you come off and you tee off with your scenario. Well, today we're going to be teeing off with column four. So let's start on the left-hand side, and it says all locations not specified below. So if it's not listed below, you're going to use this column right here. So if you go across the top and you go over to column four, you'll see that it's only required to be 12 inches deep. If you go down to the next column where it's talking about uh, concrete two inches or less, excuse me, two inches or equivalent, and you go over to column four, it's only required to be six inches deep. Now this is for UF cable, and it's also for conductors that are in conduit, but it has to be GFCI protected. Let's go down through here more. Um, under a minimum of four inches of concrete, it's only required to be um, six inches deep, respectively, okay, if you're doing direct burial, and four inches if you are in conduit, okay? And if you go down here to one and two family dwelling units um, used for parking lots only, it's only required to be 12 inches. So let me go ahead and sum this up for you. If you are dealing with a GFCI protected circuit that is 15 or 20 amps in pretty much every residential setting, you're only going to be required to dig it 12 inches deep. Think about how much time that will save you and energy and effort. That's if you're using UF cable or if you're using a conduit like PVC or rigid conduit. Rigid conduit, you can put it even less, okay? But this is dealing with residential branch circuits. So if you are in a, um, you know, a raceway or a conduit and you are dealing with a 20 amp branch circuit, okay, or a 15 amp branch circuit, and it's GFCI protected, you're only required to dig it 12 inches deep. Now, there's a couple rules that we got to watch out for here. All right, so there's a couple important things that we have to watch out for anytime that we are running underground circuit conductors, um, whether it be in conduit or it be direct burial cable, like a triplex or like a UF cable. Now, the rule I'm getting ready to teach you applies to all underground installations, but the rule I'm going to teach you after that is super important if you're wanting to utilize this 12 inches GFCI rule that we just learned about, make sure you stick around for the end because it's super important that you catch it. So let's go ahead and look at the first point. Now, this point that I'm getting ready to teach you applies to all underground circuits and conductors. So let's imagine that you've run UF cable or you have run conduit, okay? And you are digging your trench and you're trying to make sure it's code compliant. So when you pull that tape on, whether it's the wire or the pipe, Okay, when you pull that tape, and let's imagine in our scenario that the in, the uh, the code book called for us to um, have the trench 12 inches deep. Well, that trench is actually required to be 12 inches deep to the top of the pipe or the wire. Okay, and let me explain what I mean. Let's imagine here that this is a one-inch conduit. 
okay? And let's say the code that we are following uh, only required the trench to be 12 inches deep. Well, our overall trench is actually going to have to be 13 inches deep because all of the burial depth requirements in the NEC actually require it to be to the top of the pipe, okay? Or the top of the wire. So if you had an 18 inch trench that you needed and you had one inch conduit, you would have to have a 19 inch deep trench. If you were required to have 24 inches deep trench, then and your conduit was two inches, you know, you had a two inch conduit and a 24 inch deep trench that you were required by code, the overall trench would actually have to be 26 inches because those measurements are actually taken from the top of the pipe or the wire. Now let's learn about the most important rule if we're wanting to use column four. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, so I'm super excited about this part of the video. We're going to learn about the number one rule that you have to remember if you're wanting to utilize column four in table 300.5. Okay, so with that being said, remember, this is for residences only, um, 120 volt circuit, 15 or 20 amps or less, and it must be GFCI protected. So let's imagine this is our home, pretty nice house. I'd live in it. Okay, and we have an outbuilding over here. And we're not wanting to dig very deep. We're wanting to utilize that code. We only want to run a 110 outlet out to this building and maybe one light. So we only want to dig 12 inches deep. So we drop our UF cable in the ground. We come up and we come over. Now this is where the most important part of this code comes into play. If you ever want to utilize the 12 inch rule, you absolutely have to GFCI protect it for one. And for two, that GFCI protection must originate before the conductors go underground. Okay, and that makes sense. They're allowing us to not dig it so deep because if it's GFCI protected there, we have that level of protection if someone were to ever dig through it. Okay, so with that being said, there's a couple ways to accomplish this. One way is with a GFCI breaker. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes only. So we could potentially put in a GFCI breaker at the origination of the branch circuit. Okay, and it would be this would be code compliant. It would protect it all the way across and all the way to the outbuilding. Also, at the same time, your outbuilding would be required to be GFCI protected, so it would already be taken care of for you. The next thing that we got to watch out for and we could use is we could use a GFCI receptacle and feed it off the load side. Okay, you brought the line side into the top and off the load side, you fed your underground installation. Now this GFCI could be located inside or outside, depending on how you want to set it up. So this is one rule that we have to watch out for in order to be able to utilize the 12 inch rule is it's gotta be GFCI protected before the conductors go underground. Another thing I wanna uh, show you is that this also could be used if you're wanting to do post lights. This really applies to any 120 volt, 15 amp or less GFCI protected circuit, okay? normal circuit. You could use it for post lights. You could use it for anything. Wouldn't you much rather dig your wire 12 inches in the ground for post lights instead of 18 inches? So love this code. Just wanted to share it with you. I am the electrical code coach. This is the electricians in action. Let's get to it.